Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsurun Militan Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Panchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnabe Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading Brihad Bhagavatam Rita and we're hearing how Narada Muni is trying to search out the person who has received the greatest mercy from Lord Krishna. So Narada Muni, in his search, he had first of all, he began with a Brahmana. And then the Brahmana sent him to a king in the south. But when he went to the king, then the king sent him, he told, go and see Indra, the king of heaven. Mm. So we're hearing how Indra responds to uh, Narada's claim that Indra was receiving the greatest mercy from Krishna. So Indra, Indra says uh, the Lord accepts our worship because of the devotion of our parents. And and because of our priest, because our the heavenly priest, the priest of the demigods, he insists on to the Lord that you should accept their worship. But after he takes our offerings, when we offer things to the Lord, after he takes our offering, he immediately disappears. And he goes back to his own abode. Mm. So Narada, Narada Muni, he was suggesting to Indra that the Lord is so kind. Mm -hmm. No matter what the Lord does, he's always so kind to, to the devotees. But we cannot understand the mind of the Supreme Lord. The mind of the Lord is so deep that it's impossible for us to fully appreciate everything about the Lord. And when people are in distress, then it causes great anxiety to the Lord. And, and the Lord always tries to show compassion in whatever way he can.
So Indra should try to understand Lord Vamana's, you know, when Lord, Lord Vamana neglects Indra, Indra should try to understand the, the reason behind it, the higher reason. So Indra, he might reply in that, that way. Indra may say, well, that's all right. The Lord, he, 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 he's, he wants to, he's showing me his compassion. He's shown me his compassion. And if he would just stay here with me permanently, then he could accept my worship. And then I could tolerate everything he does. But many of the times he doesn't even let me even see him. And Indra's parents, Indra's parents are Kashyapa and Aditi. So they worship Lord Vishnu very, very intensely. They worship Vishnu in their previous life and they're continuing to worship him now. And Indra's priest is Brihaspati and he's also a, a worshipper of Vishnu. So Indra, he his thinking, he understands it. When when Lord Vishnu appears it, it, to take my offerings, he he does he doesn't he doesn't do it just out of compassion for me, but he does it because of the devotion of my parents and my priests. 嗯,聽著呢,聽著的對比就是說,當主表面上,當主降臨顯現的時候來接受我的供奉的時候,他不僅僅是出於對我個人的憐憫,而而而且呢,他是出於對我其他人的一種回報,也以及我的祭司,回
Well, whenever I am not here to accept your offering, then at that time you can worship Brahma or Shiva instead. And he said, actually, Brahma and Shiva are not different from me. And yeah, according to the scriptures, the three deities, uh, Shiva, Vishnu and Brahma, are all the same Supreme Being. Mm -hmm. So Vishnu says to Indra, have you forgotten this? So from Indra's point of view, these words are simply, you know, they're, they're just deceitful. They're not straightforward. They're, it's deceitful. Lord Vamanadev, he knows that Indra is attracted to worshipping him. But he teases Indra and he, he says to Indra, he said, do you know, in the scriptures it said you can worship Brahma and Shiva, it's the same. And Lord Vam, uh, Indra, Indra, because he's hearing these words from Lord Vamanadev, Indra is forced to do what Lord Vamanadev says. And that's why sometimes when they have a festival in heaven, sometimes they will worship Lord Shiva. We cannot be certain where Lord Vishnu lives. His, his home, his, his abode, we cannot approach it. It's difficult even for great sages to go there. Sometimes, sometimes he's in Vaikuntha and sometimes he's on Dhruva's planet. And sometimes he's in the milk ocean. So Narada may Narada might ask, why don't you join your why don't you go and join? He may say Indra, he may say to Indra, why don't you go and join with the Lord? Go and be with him. But, but Indra says, well, we don't know where, where he is. He might be in Vaikuntha. He, he, he may be beyond the material world or he's in the Vaikuntha planet. And there's a Vaikuntha planet in the universe also. There's a Vaikuntha planet in the universe. It's called Rama Priya. And he might be on Dhruva's planet, which is as called Vishnu Pada. Or he might be on the island of Sweta Dweep in the ocean of milk. And 
And now he's in Dwarka. But even even this, we're not certain. It's not a hundred percent sure that he's in Dwarka. Sometimes he goes to the house of the Pandavas and sometimes he goes to Mathura. And in Mathura, sometimes he's in the city and sometimes he wanders in Gokula from forest to forest. So it's not easy for us to see him. And it's very difficult to get his mercy. So Indra is saying that he, he should be able to see Lord Krishna easily. Because, in, because Lord Krishna is appearing on the earth. And when Indra is speaking, Lord Krishna is actually on the planet. But Lord Krishna's appearance is very confidential. Indra has difficulty to understand how the Lord can be known as his brother. And at the same time, he descends to earth. So there's a scripture called Hari Vamsa, and in the Hari Vamsa it says that when Narada had come previously as Krishna's messenger, but this is a pastime, it said in the Hari Vamsa, so it tells about Narada Muni, he had come as Krishna's messenger. And he came to ask Indra to give the Parijata flower for Queen Sachibama. So Indra was Indra was worried that that his brother Indra was worried that his brother Krishna may have become degraded by associating with the people on the earth. And Indra even thought that Krishna was too much under the control of women. Because Indra, Krishna wanted, he said he wanted the Parijata flower for Satyabhama. So Indra was making, Indra had all these doubts about Krishna. Indra was confused because Krishna was wandering on earth. Sometimes Krishna will go to Goku and he'll go to the forest of Mahavan and other different forests. And he lived for, we know he lived for a few years in Mathura and then he finally moved to Dwarka and he settled down in Dwarka. 
我们知道，鲁一开始在格库勒，后来他又去了马图拉，最终呢，他定居在杜尔卡城。And he constantly travels. Although he has a nice home in Dwarka, still he travels. He goes to Mithila and to Hastinapur and to see the Pandavas and also to visit Vrindavan. Um, So Krishna sometimes does go from Dwarka to Vrindavan, and the the people of Dwarka know. Yeah, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's described how the people of Dwarka pray to Krishna. And they pray to Krishna. They say, "Oh, whenever you go away to Vrindavan or Hastinapur to meet your friends and relatives, then every moment of your absence seems like a million years." So at that time, the people of Dwarka say, at that time our eyes become useless, just as a, just like as if there's no sun. Dwarka's citizens say. 每当这种时刻来临的时候，我们的双眼就变得没用了，好像太阳不在天空。So, uh, Indra speaking. You should know. He's speaking to Narada. He says. You, you, you are the best son of Brahma, and but you should know that your own father, Brahma, he really got the mercy of Lord Hari. Indra 对拿尔达说，你应当了解啊 ，Brahma 的 ，Brahma 的儿子做佼佼者呀。您自己的父亲，他就是主哈瑞的真正的仁慈的接收者。He is directly the son of Lord Vishnu, the husband of Lakshmi. The four Kumaras, their older sons of, they're the oldest sons of Brahma. They're senior to Narada Muni. And there's many, there's other sons of Brahma also before Narada. But Narada is superior because of his pure devotion. Narada is a great devotee of Lakshmi Kanta. Narada is the great devotee of Lakshmi Kanta, the great devotee of Lakshmi Kanta. But even better than Narada Muni, who is the best son, is the father born. Not from Mother Lakshmi's womb, but directly from the navel of the Supreme Person. Right? You know who that is who's born directly from the navel of Brahma, of Vishnu? 
，那位直接从威士诺的莲花莲花肚脐上生出来那位人是是谁吗 ？Yeah, it's Lord Brahma. 啊，就是主 Brahma. So in one day of Brahma, there are fourteen Indras, like this one who's talking. Fourteen Indras come and go, come and go in the one day of Brahma. Fourteen different Indras. 那么当下的这位英主就说，在布拉玛的一天当中呢，就像我这样的英主有一共有十四位，是来来去去的，一共有十四位英主出现和消失。And then there are also different Manus. 除此之外，还有不同的 Manu。And all the different demigods. 各各 and one day equals one thousand cycles of the different ages on Earth. Brahma 的一天呢，相当于嗯一千个地球的年代循一千个地球的年代循环。Yeah, Bhagavad Gita says there's one thousand cycles of the four yugas and one day of Brahma. 我家房哥说，在布拉玛的一天当中，有一千个年代循环。And Brahma's night is of the same length; it's equal to the day. 嗯，而且在，呃，那刚才是啊，布拉玛的白昼，而布拉玛的夜晚呢，也是同样的长度。And there are three hundred and sixty days in one year of Brahma. 在 Brahma 的一天当中呢，有三百六，一一年当中有三百六十天。And and one lifetime of Brahma is a hundred years. 而 Brahma 的一生呢，还持续一百年。嗯。So fourteen times in each day of Brahma, there are. Different manus. Uh, in Brahma, the every day, there are fourteen different manus. And different indras, different demigods, different incarnations of the Lord come and go. Um, there are different indras, different demigods, different incarnations of the Lord come and go. Um, there are different indras, different demigods, different incarnations of the Lord. And for each manu, there'll be six different forms. There'll be six different appearances of Lord Hari. And in each manu during the time, um, Lord Hari has six different appearances. And there will be different, the chief demigods and the manu and the sons of manu and the great sages, and all the incarnations of the Lord. 嗯，有主要的半神人们，有妈祖，伟大的圣者们，以及至尊的守神的天权化身。So Indra has heard about all this, but Indra has a very short life, very difficult for him to understand it all, because we can understand only in relation to our own life. Indra's life is very short compared to Brahma's. 嗯，英主都事先曾经听说过这些事情，但是比起 Brahma 的寿命而言呢，英主的寿命是非常短暂的，所以他的理解力也很短，也很也很有限。And Brahma is the creator of the planets and and the rulers, and he 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 decides who should be the ruler. Brahma 是嗯各个星球的创造者。And he protects the world, and he also gives out the different karma, fruit, the fruit of karma. He protects the world, and he also gives out the different karma, fruit, the fruit of karma. He protects the world, and he also gives out the different karma, fruit, the fruit of karma. He protects the world, and he also gives out the different karma, fruit, the fruit of karma. 在布拉玛的夜晚降临的时候，人当个世界就归于毁灭
And there's a personality called the Mahapurush. And the Mahapurush is the one thousand headed form of the Lord. And you can always see him on the planet of Lord Brahma. And he personally accepts he, he personally accepts the of, oblations when they're offered to him. And he always gives pleasure to his devotees. So this is how Indra is compared, he's saying Brahma is really great. Yeah, the beginning of his life, he will choose people to serve, to take the position of Indra and who should be the Prajapatis and which, what position the demigods they should take. It all be decided by Brahma. And he protects the universe. He protects the universe from chaos by Vedic sacrifice. And he also establishes the different laws, the social laws for all the different people, the humans. So Brahma is not only the creator, but he also helps to maintain. And Indra says that he also destroys it. He says when Brahma goes to sleep at night, then there's a, a break in his meditation and that will destroy the universe. And when Haranyakashipu worshipped Brahma, Haranyakashipu, he was a big demon, he wanted to change the universal order. So he worshipped Brahma and he glorified Brahma. And in his prayers to Brahma, he, he, this Haranyakashipu, he said, let me offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Lord within this universe. And he, Haranyakashipu says at the end of each day of his life, end of each day of Brahma's life, the universe becomes covered with dense darkness. And then the next day, when the next day comes, then the, the Lord, by his own effulgence, he will maintain, manifest, this and destroy the whole cosmic manifestation. Uh, 
He can do this because he he's in, he has the three modes of material nature. He's in So living together with Brahma on his planet is a is the Supreme Lord, the incarnation of the Lord, who is called the Mahapurush. Mahapurush has 1,000 heads. And he is considered the first incarnation. Uh, he is the first incarnation. The first incarnation we could say is, is Mahavishnu, and then from Mahavishnu, then he expands as Garbhodakashayi Vishnu. So they are described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The first Mahavishnu, and then Garbhodakashayi Vishnu. So the Supreme Lord comes into the material world, first of all, in the form of the Mahapurush. In the beginning of the creation, the Lord expanded himself in the universal form. And then he manifested all the ingredients of the material creation. So then that, that way there was a creation of the different principles, 16 principles of material action. This is this is for the purpose of creating the material universe. So a part of the Purusha, the Ma, the Maha Purusha, a part of the Purusha lays down within the water of the universe. So that is Garbhodakashayi Vishnu. And he is laying down within the universe and from his navel comes the lotus flower. And from that lotus flower, Brahma takes birth. So it's believed that all the material planets are situated on the body of the Purusha. But he doesn't, the Purusha doesn't have anything to do with the different material ingredients. The body of the Purusha is eternally in spiritual existence. And the devotees with the perfect eyes can see the transcendental form of the Purusha. And they can see his thousands of legs and arms and faces, 
all extraordinary. So in that body, the, there are thousands of heads and ears and eyes and noses. And they're all decorated with thousands of helmets and earrings and covered and decorated with garlands. And this form is the source and the seed of all the different incarnations within the universe. So different demigods, different living entities like demigods and men and others, they're all there. They all come from this form. So the Mahaparusha is the support of the material nature. He's the original source of all the basic causes of creation. Things like the five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And the, he's the source of the eleven senses, means the five knowledge senses, the five working senses in the mind. And he performs his pastimes while he's lying in the ocean that fills the bottom of the universe. And from his navel comes the lotus flower. And it's from that lotus flower all the different forms of the material existence are created. And at the top of the flower, that's where Brahma is born. And when Brahma is inside the lotus flower, inside the stem of the lotus, at that time Brahma can understand the plan, the detail, the plan of creation. So Brahma saw that that lotus flower on which he was born, from which he was born, that lotus flower was spread throughout the universe. Okay. Uh, so the lotus flower spread throughout the universe and Brahma contemplates how to create all the planets. Because previously all the planets had become merged into this, that same lotus flower. So 
So Brahma, we see Brahma is always engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord and he entered into the whirl of the lotus flower. And he, he, the lotus flower spread all over the universe, it, and so the universe gets divided into three divisions, and then later into fourteen different divisions. So by meditation, Brahma discovered the thousand-headed Mahapurush. Because in the beginning, the Mahapurush had become invisible. And Brahma couldn't see him. But then in his meditation, Brahma realized the Mahapurush was there. So Brahma offered prayers to him and he had a special request to the Lord. And he requested the Lord, please come and live on my planet in this very form. So, this is how the Lord came to live on the planet of Brahma and became the, the constant guest of Brahma. So that Mahaparush is also called the All Pure. Even when it gives shelter, when he gives shelter to the material energy, he, he remains untouched by the material energy. And he is also substantial reality because he is the all-pervading absolute truth. And he is an incarnation of Godhead. But he is also called the fountainhead of all other incarnations. This is because he is the total support of the material nature. So he's almost like he's almost like the Supreme Lord who's the master of Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan. And all the incarnations of Narayan appear in this world because uh, they all appear in this world. They appear during the rule of the Mahapurusha. During the rule of the Mahapurusha's servant, Brahma. Uh -huh. And in the eleventh canto, it also describes about the Mahapurusha. Uh, 
Then it says, when the when the primeval Lord Narayan entered or created the universal body. So out of the five elements produced from himself by his own power. So he became the Purusha. Elaborate arrangements within his body are the three planetary systems of the universe. And it So the, 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 his transcendental senses generate the knowledge acquiring and active senses of all the beings. Like right? we have knowledge senses and working senses, so these are all generated from the Mahapurusha. And his consciousness also generates conditioned knowledge. And his powerful breathing produces the bodily strength and the, the, the different activities of the embodied souls. And he is the prime mover through the agency of the material modes of goodness, passion and ignorance. And in this way, the universe is created, maintained, and annihilated. The Mahapurusha produced the total body of the universe. And then he entered into it just for his pastime. But he didn't do it just for his own enjoyment. He, he is the enjoyer of the universal body. So he's the most pious of all conditioned beings. And he is called the Purusha because he lays down within the, the, the water of the universal shell. And all the three worlds are all there within his body. So Mahaparusha is responsible for creation, maintenance and annihilation. So Indra is describing that the Mahapurusha lives constantly on Lord Brahma's planet. And he takes all the offerings made in sacrifice. Uh, 
And all of these offerings are like a river, a constant flowing river, because on Brahma Loka many sacrifices are always performed. So we want we may wonder what do they do up there in Brahmaloka? They're doing sacrifices, they're offering fire sacrifice and of making these offerings to the Lord. So because the Lord is satisfied by these offerings, so all the people on Brahma's planet, they're always blissful. They enjoy great happiness. And because the Lord is always satisfied by these offerings, Uh, it's, it's true that the Mahapurush, sometimes he goes away from there, sometimes he will, he will leave. At that time, he will merge into the body of Lord Krishna to join him in Mathura. Uh, and he will join Krishna, who is on the earth planet, when he appears in Mathura. So at that time, the ecstasy on Brahma Loka gets interrupted. But the nature of time on Brahma Loka, time on Brahma Loka is so great that even the 100 years of Krishna's pastime on earth, it's a very short time on Brahma Loka. So just like Brahma Loka, it's just like Mahapurusha is always there on Brahma Loka. Mm. So Indra says, Indra says to Narada, he said, I could tell you thousands of other reasons why Brahma is the real object of Krishna's mercy. He is actually Krishna himself. So, this is Narada Muni's, this is what Indra is saying to Narada Muni. So we'll stop here. Yeah. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh昨天晚上的问题，来自于苏吉特桑格达西，顶拜咕噜爹莲哈祖，请问咕噜，冬天和夏天早晨太阳出来的时间差很多，我们早起的时间也需要随之改变吗？ <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, difficult. <coughs> but, but, you know, the system is we take advantage of the time before the sunrise. 
呃，这个制度就是。是我们充分利用在日出之前的那些那个期间。Of course, but in, on your place, the sun rises in the summertime. It rises like three o'clock in the morning. 呃，但是在您居住的地方呢，日日出大概是凌晨三点钟。So you have to get up at half past one. 那么不，这就意味着您得凌晨一点半就起床。<coughs> so difficult, very difficult. 嗯，所以这这么早起床就有点困难。What to do? 那怎么办呢？ <laughs> Anyway, Prabhupada would usually say, "Make sure to get up by four o'clock in the morning." That's the important thing. Don't sleep until seven and eight o'clock in the morning. 啊，不要一直睡到清晨七八点才起床。OK。下一个问题是来自于马杜康蒂·德维达西，敬爱的古尔德，请问您的莲花组，您讲课说不能把物质转化为灵性，我就不知道怎么做一个谦卑的仆人。也总爱用曾经学习物质方面的道德去思考审视别人，不知道怎么放下曾经学习的，真正学习，从而真正学习 Krishna 之觉。什么意思？啊，嗯 ，Well, my my auntie said, uh, in your lecture, you you said that we cannot. Change the material into spiritual. Into spiritual, then I don't know how to become a humble servant because I always try. I'm happy to. I used to use the material moral codes to judge and to see the to see things, and I don't know how to give up those. Knowledge I have learned and began to really learn Krishna consciousness. I don't really know what what her question is. Uh, um, I think her question question is related to the uh, evening class about that we cannot use our material experience uh, into. Uh, Exchange our material experiences and use it in our spiritual practice. Hmm. Well, yeah, you can. What your material, your material experience, you can use it also in Krishna consciousness. Um. You can use your material experience in Krishna consciousness. Just like. Maybe in the material world, maybe you have a job and you work in an office and you're a secretary. And so when you come to Krishna consciousness, maybe you can be secretary in the office. Oh, 比如说您在物质工作上呢是一个坐办公室的，那么在 Krishna 世界当中呢，您可以成为一个秘书，担任秘书一职。If you've cultivated some good qualities or some good habits. Then you can use them in the service of Krishna, and the bad habits you have to give up. If you have already cultivated some good qualities, have cultivated some good habits, then you can use them in the service of Krishna. If you have already cultivated some good qualities, have cultivated some good habits, then you can use them in the service of Krishna. If you have already cultivated some good qualities, have cultivated some good habits, then you can use them in the service of Krishna. 嗯，下一个问题是来自于，嗯 
红红冕，哈尔克什纳，禀拜公主。感谢你，请问马哈普鲁什，马哈普鲁什啊，总在布拉玛罗卡接受祭祀。他很开心，他很开心。那地球上的我们所见的灾难从哪儿来的呢？嗯、uh, ，This Mahaprabhu is very happy to receive those offerings in Brahmaloka. Then, uh, those uh disaster on the earth, where does it then? Where do they come from? The disasters on the earth, they 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 come from our disobedience to the laws of the Lord. Because we are trying to enjoy the world without recognizing the proprietorship of Krishna. 嗯，因为我们呃试图享受这个世界，然后同时我们也不承认主对这个世界的拥有权。嗯哼。嗯。The next one， 第二个，下一个是上周的问题。上周问题，舒提如何得达西？顶拜咕噜，我怎么可以突破从小到大？就一直存在的紧张感呢？请问这是我过去罪恶深重的心理阴影吗？该怎么突破呢？感恩。I I always feel very nervous. Is that because um all the things Papa I have committed and those have left an impression on my mind? How can I break through though? Break through it. Yes, yes, you're right. That our nervousness could be impressions due to things in the past, different things which happened in the past. 嗯，您说的是正确的。这是由于我们过往所从事的种种的罪恶活动，就在我们的内心心田当中，留下了印印记、阴影。But you can change it. You can get rid of it by chanting Hare Krishna. 嗯，但是您可以通过唱诵 Hare Krishna 去除这些阴影儿。By good chanting, purify your consciousness and get rid of all that. 通过很好的来唱诵，都可以去除掉这些阴影儿。嗯哼。嗯，下一个问题是来自于香香。Yes. 嗯。Right, I have a question from Shang Shang from her letter to me. Okay, about the Radharani. Radharani. Oh, first, let me read the question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, Shang Shang said, "Thank you, Kumar. Follow Feng Fu means follow Feng Fu. We are in Radharani's control. How do we follow Feng Fu? I don't understand this. 太理解。She、oh, she doesn't understand.、Uh, yes.、Uh, she, she doesn't understand how to serve Radharani. No, no, not exactly. She said that devotional service is under the control of Radharani. I cannot fully understand that. She cannot fully understand it. Yeah. Well, uh. Just like in a, in a government, there are different offices, different departments. So somebody may be the head of the government, but there's different offices. Somebody is in charge of the army. Somebody is in charge of hospitals. Somebody is in charge of education. And so the same way in the in the universal government, Radharani is in charge of devotional service. 嗯，就像在呃政府一个政府，它有不同的办公部门，比如说呃，在政府政府这个首脑下面呢，有负责军事的
呃，有负责医疗的，有负责教教育的教育部、医疗部、军军事军队。然后在整个这个宇宙的政府当中呢，亚德拉尼负责掌控着婚外服务。嗯嗯。Okay. Uh, next one. Yeah. Okay. 下一个是来自于 Zeta Rani， 顶拜孤儿莲花族。很多消时光最后一推，那个伟大的人物就是 Krishna 本人。只有他还。能做那么多奇妙非凡的事情，那我们普通人为什么要削尖脑袋去追寻完美呢？如果知足常乐会怎么样呢？感恩您 ，Understand, Mara? No. The Sitarani said that, um, um, please accept my humble humble obeisance to Lotus Feet Guru. Uh, in many pastimes. Uh, that uh, the final touch, the final wonderful personality is Krishna himself. Only Krishna can perform so many wonder miracles. Then, uh, as ordinary person, people, why should we always hunger, hunger perfection if we are always satisfied and uh, we are always happy? What what will happen if we always satisfied and happy, and not to hunger for per perfection? Because Krishna, uh, because we are ordinary person, and only Krishna is can perform miracles. Hmm. Well, yes. Let Krishna perform the miracles. We want to just simply become devoted to Krishna. We want to develop love for Krishna. And what will happen if we develop love for Krishna? Then that's why we'll be happy, we'll be fully satisfied. When we give love to Krishna, then you're actually satisfied. You give your love to anybody else, you won't be satisfied forever. You won't be fully satisfied. But if we give love to Krishna, Krishna fully satisfies us. 对，那就让 Krishna 去，呃，去做那些奇迹吧。啊、呃，我们只需要培养父爱情。如果我们有了父爱，我们就会快乐和满足。如果我们爱 Krishna 就快乐了。但是如果我们爱的是别人而不是 Krishna， 那是不会快乐的。如果爱 Krishna 才得到彻底的全部的满足。嗯，我们爱 Krishna 的话 ，Krishna 会满足我们。Yeah. Nothing else, you know. You you may love, you love a man, and you love your house, you love your children. They will all, you know, that love is not eternal. That love is very limited. But give your love to Krishna, you'll be fully satisfied. 嗯，如果您把您的爱嗯献给 Krishna 的话，您就会彻底的心满意足了。And just to help us to love him, Krishna performs these miracles. He does all these pastimes, these miracles. It's just to help to make it easier for us to love him. 为了帮助我们来爱他，所以 Krishna 就上演了所有这些奇迹，上演了所有这些消时光，目的是为了帮助我们爱他。And we'll think how wonderful Krishna is. Ah, you will be astonished. Oh, Krishna, this is too wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next is from Shyama Ranjini. Hare Krishna, dear Guru 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 Maharaj. You are the one who is bowing to me. All glory to Pak Pak. Thank you. Very well. Krishna, because my computer, I cannot fully control this. Okay. Control this. Um. 
，沙丁的问题，您在吗？您能不能读一下这些问题呢？哎，我看这问题有点费劲儿。嗯，好的好的。嗯，呃，下呃下面让金呃让让金林把他提问，就是请问姑若遇到灵性导师却提不出来问题，是否能够进步？你在你那边 ？If you don't meet the guru, can you still make spiritual advancement? She she met guru, but she cannot raise questions. Oh, she cannot raise questions. Oh. Well, that's okay. Just hear, just try to hear, and understand. 没没有问题，嗯，这这是嗯无可厚非的，需要聆听，然后努力去理解聆听的内容。We hope, we hope you can understand. Even if you can't ask any questions, we hope you can understand. 我们希望您提不出问题，您也可以理解。Yeah. 你知道，我有些问题在这儿，可以让我读这些问题吗？嗯，萨提曼的姐姑说，她有一些问题，可以不可以来读呢？嗯，好的。一个通过派书来的新人，想找自己生活问题，也很焦虑。比如事业、孩子教育、老公等，一年多时间得到了奉献者很多的帮助，但行动上总是激情一会儿就就不做了，却还总总是来来问相来问相同的问题，我怎么办？我怎么办？绝对真理和生活的实际益处，给他讲了一箩筐，他还是在原地。我还能怎么服务呢？这个是刚才那个。嗯。啊，他这是嗯 ，Yeah， 嗯 ，Her question is that、uh, there is a new Bakin who No, who knew Krishna consciousness through book distribution, and the this new Bhakin found found her found the Krishna Kumar Madhuri, and um she had a lot of problem in her life, family life, and jobs, uh, and uh, and she the new Bhakin is very passionate. Sometimes is very enthusiastic. And sometimes not so enthusiastic. And after one year, she raised the same question again. How、uh, come she applied the theory about absolute truth into her practical life? She seems not very、uh, experienced in that. And Krishna Kumar Madhuri asked, "How can she serve this?" New back in in this situation. Well, I think you 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 did the best service. You just tried to introduce them to Krishna consciousness. It's up to the new back team to take advantage of the process of Krishna consciousness. 那么 ，Krishna Kumar Mala， 您已经做了最好的服务了。因为您已经把 Krishna 直接介绍给他们，然后对接下来的呢，应该取决于他们自己，该利如何利用好 Krishna 直接这个法门。She may not be ready to give up everything. She may not be ready to really take up Krishna consciousness, but try to keep engaging her in devotional service. 他现在可能还没有做好放弃的准备，呃，没好没有做好准备来放弃一些事情。
，但是呢，嗯嗯，也没有做好充分的来呃接受 Krishna 之觉的准备。但是您要努力的呃，让他们从事奉爱服务，使他们从事做服务。You know, we can't, we can't change the philosophy. She has a lot. If she has a lot of material desires, but she has to, she has to try to open up her heart to try to take up serious chanting and hearing. We are not able 呃，他应该敞开心扉，然后他应该对待念诵、对待聆听，特别认真的对待念诵和聆听这件事这两件事儿。She she can never expect perfection in the material world. 嗯 ，She can never expect perfection. Perfection. So try to get her more absorbed to, to think more about devotional service and less about the material world. So you can try to get her more absorbed. 呃，有更多的思考，就是想着奉献服务这件事儿，而较少的去考虑物质世界这这个物质世界。那、uh, ，OK， any other questions？ The next question。下一个问题。哦，在那个，在这个那个 Krishna 那个上面还有一个问题，凡哥那个，我给你读。啊，您来读吧。啊啊啊！这个问题是，我爱我的女儿，依恋我的女儿，有点快乐，和爱奉爱和爱 Krishna 有区别和联系吗？嗯。She she said, I love my daughter. I attached my daughter. Is there is there any connection with uh my love? Well, not really. No. Your love for your daughter—that's based on the body, because you're thinking she's your daughter. She's born from your body. But you should understand, your daughter in previous life she was in another body, but she had no connection with you. Um, you love your daughter, and love Krishna, no connection. Um, you love your daughter. 您依附女儿的躯体，您认为你的女儿的身体是出于您的身体，是，然后，但是您的女儿的前世，她的躯体跟您也没有什么关系。嗯。So you have to think of your daughter as a part of Krishna. Yeah, she's only a tiny part of Krishna. So you love your daughter, you should have even more love for Krishna. 那您的女儿呢？她实际上是 Krishna 的所属部分，非常渺、微小的、微小的所属部分。那如果您爱您女的女儿、依附女儿的话，那么您应该更爱 Krishna， 更依附 Krishna。嗯哼 ，OK， next question。下一个问题，看吗？我们可以慢慢点，不下个问题吧。呃，那个还是那个那个 Krishna。他就接着接着问的啊，嗯，嗯，等一下，接呃接前面的问题，同时服务他和他介绍来的新人，后者都已经脱离孤独了，稳定进步中，这证明我只是工具。超龄在每一个人心中，对吗？他内心不动，我也帮不上他什么吧。嗯。啊？读读完了。嗯。k 
Krishna Kumari continues to say that uh, I continue to serve this new bhakti and the, the people she brought, she brought in. And they make progress. That proves that I'm always, I'm always an instrument. That proves that the, the super soul is in everyone's heart. And if she does not change her heart, then I can do nothing about that. <laughs> yes, you're right. Should you should agree. Yeah, it's, it's up to her and Krishna. But keep giving her mercy. Yeah, she needs mercy. And you, if you give her more mercy, then, then she'll get the mercy of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, how you went to? Dingbai 让奉献者产生骄傲。If <laughs> it pleases the devotees, we will become proud. Will that make devotee proud because we try to please them, please devotee? Well, that's good. That's a good pride. If you're proud of pleasing the devotee, it's very nice. She means that if we try to please the devotee, then uh, will the devotee that we try to please will then will they become uh, proud, proud because we try to please them? Well, we hope not. We hope devotee is not eager to be served. Devotees like to give service. We don't like to take service. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Chin uh, this devotee Gita, she asked, now the government had allowed people to, uh, to give birth to the third, the third child. So, so what should we do? Should we give birth to the third, uh, to, to give birth to a devotee or to try to cultivate somebody to become devotee? <laughs> <coughs> well, 
It's nice if you like to have, if you like to give birth, give birth to a pure child. It means you have to give birth in Krishna, uh, in a Krishna conscious manner, so that you get a very good soul into your womb. Then okay, that's very nice. And if you can bring souls to Krishna consciousness, that's also nice. Mm. <laughs> so we leave it to you to decide what you want to do. You want to have a third child? Go ahead, but have a Krishna conscious child. Mm. Okay. Uh both from devotee family, but the astrologer says that uh, they are not uh, very fit with each other. What, what should we do? What to do? What, they're a couple? You mean? Um, uh, there is a girl and a boy. They are all both from devotee family, and they are at the age of married. Mm. And the, fa the parents, they they ask the ast uh, advice of the astrologer and... Well, astrology, and astrology is not 100%. Okay. Cannot... Mm. But if, if you should, you, you have to consider if they're similar, are they, are they, do they have similar interests? Will they be able to get along with each other? We, it's a good idea for get to know each, let them get to know each other without getting too intimate and see if they're, they're actually, they can work together. That's important. Yeah. Astrology is not 100%. You cannot just be guided by astrology. But let them discuss what they want to do in the future. How do they see the future? What are their plans? How many children do they think they're going to have? Do, is the girl going to keep working? Or does she, what, you know, what, where are they going? They should talk about their plans. If they get married, then what are they going to do? What will they, where will they live? And what will happen? And they should discuss the future. Mm -hmm. 
what are their plans for the future and see if they can have the similar plans. Yes. And then, then gradually you you they can you can understand if they're if they can actually make a couple, but they don't want to get married too quickly. They don't want to move too quick. They should get to know each other and see if they're actually compatible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we'll stop here today. Mama Ganshia Guru Mani, give Mama Fani, Ganshia Soyo the functions and LinkedIn, Mama Jufuni Man, Wanshi Rui, Shanghai. Well, uh, how 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 needs some? <laughs>